Hi, this is Thomas Farley, and on Sunday night, I tried to kill myself for the first time, and it didn't work out. And you probably won't believe why. And for all of those of you thinking, well, just throw yourself in front of a train and stop complaining, tune out. I've got some other points to make, so just go away. I've dealt with you people too long. I think it, the larger point is that the medical community does not recognize assisted uh, suicide, assistant end of life for uh, the terminally ill, mentally ill. Uh, if they can't see it, it doesn't exist. And psychiatry says, oh, mental illness does exist, but we, we're not going to help you die. It's just if you have a physical problem that we can actually see. So go figure. Anyway, I had all of this. You know, I've had these nightmares for 32 years. Sunday, I, I've tried everything. Uh, people know my story. This is what I did. Okay. It's, it's, it's still baffling to me. I was all ready to go, ready to die. I was ready to meet my parents. I really was wanted to meet my parents and I still do but I want to do it in peace and not in a violent way I had these pictures on the dashboard I had all of the DNR I had all these notes on my truck please do not resuscitate please do not resuscitate anyway I'm in, in sort of my happy place the garage this is where I wanted to die <laughs> um and so what I did was um carbon monoxide I thought that was a great way just inhale go to sleep but to make extra sure see the exhaust there I hooked up this air dryer vent directly into the cab closed the windows and let the engine run but to make extra sure I had been uh, hoarding clonopin which is a tranquilizer I downed about 25 of them uh, the psychiatrist normally tells me to take only a half, uh, half to one a day as needed. So I took 25, probably drank three quarters of a bottle of hard alcohol between the vodka and the whiskey, and sat in the cab, closed the windows, and the exhaust just blew in like a fire hose. I mean, it was a tremendous flow, and waited... Uh, just for me to pass out and to meet my parents again and find some peace and it didn't work <laughs> two hours later I'm still conscious I'm still completely aware of my situation and now I'm getting concerned that if the neighbors detect something that emergency services will bust in while I'm still aware and conscious and if that's the case they're gonna throw me in a hospital uh, if I was unconscious then the DNR the do not resuscitate would come into effect but I'm, I'm fully conscious and I mean two hours of that exhaust flooding in 25 clonopin three-quarters of a bottle of heart alcohol and I'm still thinking fairly clearly I mean what is going on but at two hours the question was, well, if emergency services come in, they're going to bag me. They're going to put me in a hospital, and they're going to stick me with needles, because that's all a hospital is about, is sticking you with needles. <laughs> and needles are the one thing that I am most afraid of. And then they would kick me out of the hospital in a week, and they wouldn't cure my nightmares. The, ho the hospitals don't cure your nightmares. I even went to uh, the... Aurora Clinic in Tucson for ECT, for electroconvulsive therapy, shock treatment. That didn't help. So I'd come out, the garage would all be busted up, the neighbors would be embarrassed and questioning me, and my situation, well actually in the hospital things get worse because I'm so anxious I get even more nightmares with all those needles being stuck into me. So this is just a plea for the medical community to please try to help us um, mentally ill that are terminal. You say that's not terminal. It is. Those nightmares are killing me every single night. And you have no idea what's going on. So all of us nightmare sufferers have to go out in the desert and shoot ourselves in the head or throw ourselves in front of a train 
and you won't help us. I would want to die in a relaxed setting under medical supervision. This is the best I could think of. I did everything I thought I could do, and it didn't work. So now <laughs> let's reevaluate. I, I killed all of my electronics to make sure I couldn't communicate. I threw my computer, my Apple phone, my everything into a wash of mineral oil and degreaser and killed it all. Um, so now <laughs> I'm reevaluating the world, and I know there's a bunch of people. Just go throw yourself in front of a truck. Well, you go throw yourself in front of a truck for all the care that you do. And I am every day. I just did a bunch of volunteer work today. I'm trying to be positive. I just wish I, I've done a, a huge amount of volunteer work, even when I feel horrible. Uh, but I'm I don't know what went wrong. And I'm just I was willing to go. I wanted to go. That was the moment, and it's gone. And I did. So we have to <laughs> have to figure out what what happens from here. Thank you for listening, and if you're suffering, I am, if, if you are suffering like I am, I really, really feel sorry for you, and I hope that you find peace in any way that you can.